Theodore Adorno. Adorno was born in 1903 and grew up in Frankfurt. Adorno was an uncompromising thinker and leading representative of the group of critical intellectuals associated with the Institute for Social Research at the University of Frankfurt. As a sociologist, he wrote damning analyses of instrumental reason, modern culture and authoritarian character. Create a concept called the negative dialectics, which involves not only revealing how our everyday concepts mask social reality but also demonstrating how the contradiction between truth and illusion says much about how modern life is experienced. Above all else, Adorno was concerned with human misery and domination. The unifying theme at the core of his work is that the history of civilization is based on the repression of nature and the consolidation of oppressive social systems that negate human freedom. Adorno's despairing view of modernity and deeply pessimistic understanding of mass culture are offset by the tentative hope of imagining a world free from Anissa's sorry suffering. At the University of Frankfurt, cultural questions began to assume significance, with various attempts at integrating dialectical Marxism with Freud's psychoanalysis appearing. More generally, Horkheimer sought to distance the Institute from the workers' movement in a further effort to break with orthodox Marxism and to give it an essentially academic identity. He coined the term critical theory to define the new approach emanating from the Institute. Throughout his life he differed fundamentally from Marx in that his philosophy never included a theory of political action. A crucial influence on Adorno's understanding of Marx was the work of the Hungarian Georgi Lukasius in history and class consciousness. Lukasius's theory of reification, which refers to the ways in which commodity fetishism saturates all social relations in capitalist societies, produced a searing moral condemnation of capitalism. Adorno shared this understanding of the destructive consequences of commodity fetishism, but was never swayed by Lucas C.S.'s optimism that the revolutionary working-class consciousness would overcome reification. With the Nazi seizure of power in 1933, Adorno's future as a German academic was bleak. Horkheimer's Institute, as a Marxist think tank staffed almost exclusively by Jewish men, was one of the first intellectual groups forced into exile. The move to America enabled Adorno to develop his intellectual ties with Horkheimer and he soon joined the latter in Southern California. The pair worked closely together and produced a landmark document of their now joint position, The Dialectic of Enlightenment, first published in 1947, combined Marx with Weber and Nietzsche's understandings of reason and domination. The book came to prominence in the 1960s and is the defining statement of the Frankfurt School. It explores the self-destructive tendencies of modern societies and its central argument is that instrumental rationality, the form of reasoning that separates facts from value by being solely concerned with practical purposes, has undermined the emancipatory potential of enlightenment. Fascism, for instance, used many of the tools of instrumental reason and modern science in its barbaric destruction and brutal repression. However, democratic states as much as authoritarian ones possess dehumanizing tendencies. These are more subtle but no less damaging, a claim examined in Horkheimer and Adorno's analysis of what they call the culture industry, which obliterates individuality and silences critical thinking through mass deception. In the culture industry, the individual is an illusion not merely because of the standardization of the means of production however, Horkheimer and Adorno were keenly aware that the triumph of advertising in the culture industry is that consumers feel compelled to buy and use its products even though they see through them. Adorno develops this possibility of seeing through yet obeying in a subsequent study of the astrology column of the Los Angeles Times, written in the 1950s but published only in 1994 as The Stars Down to Earth. The overall aim is to analyze and understand the motivations of some large-scale phenomena involving irrational elements in a peculiar way. Rather than dismissing astrology as simply irrational, he argued that the instrumental rationality of capitalist societies gives astrology a degree of coherence with which to provide for the readers of columns the means of living with conditions beyond their apparent control. Yet for Adorno, astrology avoids fatalism. The reader of horoscope columns is continually exhorted to make choices, 
though in the end this is an empty autonomy that produces social conformity. The column's implicit rule is that the reader must adjust to the command of the stars, while appealing to the narcissism of the individual and portraying the reader as someone able to change their circumstances through their personal assets, such as deploying charm, magnetism or intuition in particular situations. The result is that individuality itself is submerged in the process of transformation of ends into means. Adorno extended this concern with social conformity and mass irrationality in his collaborative work on the authoritarian personality, a large-scale empirical study carried out in the USA at the end of the Second World War. The central claim is that there is a correlation between personality structure and the support likely to be given to mass irrational movements like fascism. Using psychoanalytic categories, he argued that late capitalism produces submissive, narcissistic per sonalities that seek strong models to identify with, such as charismatic film stars or authoritarian political leaders. Much more representative of his overall approach, and arguably his greatest achievement, is the collection of aphorisms in Minima Moralia, Reflections from Damaged Life, written during his American exile. Adorno described this collection as a work of melancholy science. Written under the shadows of fascism, Stalinism and Hollywood, it offers the stark warning that, W, Rome life cannot be lived rightly. Up until his sudden death in 1969, he published at an incredible rate on a diverse range of musical and literary themes, his collected works comprise some 23 volumes. The fortunes of Adorno's thought have fluctuated since his death. Yet it is the subtlety and depth of his thinking that ensure it remains at the forefront of contemporary social theory. You like this video? Please subscribe and thanks for watching.